the challenges coming up? Because there are lots of new challenges for the group. And uh, where do you see it from the north and also from the group's uh, point of view, Paul? I think there's, um, well, let's just start with one, should we start with um, sustainability or ESG mm. or what, you know, whatever tag we want to give that. And, and it, it's, it's very relevant for individual clubs through a regulatory point of view. Um, the, the regulatory compliance yep. that clubs have now, some have now and some will have very soon in the future. But I think wider than that, it's the challenge that our members have in transitioning to a decarbonisation um, environment. That, that's, that's a challenge that, that we've got coming along. And, and I think from a wider sustainability for the international group, sustainability issue is, again, I think I've said this before actually, is, is the relevance of the international group. It's, it's not for us just to simply mm. say we, you know, we provide pooling and we buy reinsurance, that, that's not enough any longer. The, the, the role that the group plays in protection of the marine environment and safety at sea, in minimising um, casualties, etc. That, that's hugely important from a sustainability yeah. point of view. Yeah. And, and we've got to focus more on that. And you know my views on, on data and the better use sure. of data that we've got with the international group, this rich source of data that we've got that perhaps we can use more. But on the sustainability front, I think, yeah, what, what is the group's overall position there? Is it, is it for us to be telling our members what to do or to be helping them. So what's the group been doing at the moment? Well, first and foremost, we, we had a mandate from the, uh, all the 13 international group club boards to map out um, uh, what the group is already doing, uh, which is consistent with the UN Sustainability Development Goals. And, and so we decided off the back of that to look at four areas in particular. One was pooling and reinsurance. Uh, secondly was where we have a collective voice in the industry, uh, so for example at IMO. Um, and uh, thirdly was looking at safety aspects, which goes mm. to your point, Paul, in terms of gathering more data from across the uh, club base. And, and lastly uh, was casualty response, how, how the group responds uh, to big incidents, a bit like um, what we were talking about a bit earlier on the Golden Ray, yep. and, and preserving and maintaining the marine environment for future generations. Mm. So um, we've been given this mandate, that work is well underway, and off the back of that, we will no doubt identify some gaps where we need to do more. Yeah. And um, that's really where I see this going for the group. I think there's a danger in, in trying to take away cover, for example, from ship owners um, uh, if they aren't uh, decarbonising quickly enough or doing something which uh, may not fit with certainly ESG agendas and I think we need to be really really careful before mm. uh, that happens. I, I'm not sure what your view is on that Paul. No, I, I, fully, I fully endorse that. I think there are, there are, there are any number of ESG agendas and, and measurement tools out there. Um, I, th I think traditionally as the international group we've, we, we've worked on the basis of what is IMO mandated mm. and, and I think that's probably where the vast majority of our members would expect us to be. Yep. Uh, and I, th I think that is absolutely the right position to be. But I, I passionately believe, and I think shared by many, many clubs, that, that our role as the international group is to help our members in this transition. There, is a tr there will be a transition. Uh, every ship owner I speak to, every ship owner on my board and, and other clubs, they're, they're, they're behind the fact there will be a, tran a transition, uh, decarbonisation yeah. transition. But it's not our role, I don't think, as the international group to drive that or, or, or to force that. It's to help, to facilitate, to support it. And, and equally, on a wider point, I mean, the ship owners are often labelled with this issue to resolve, but the ship owners haven't got the technology. Mm -hmm. The technology has to be there, the, fuel, the, the acceptable fuel source has to be there, and the ship owners then have to comply with that. At the moment, it seems to me it's a little bit pushed towards the ship owner has to, has to solve the problem, when actually, I don't think those, the, the, the manufacturers, developers have actually solved the problem themselves. That's absolutely right. I mean, uh, my understanding is we're still very much at the research and development stage, which is going to be the new fuel that mm. drives ship engines in five, ten years' time. Yep. And, and we also need to bear in mind that the carbon footprint of the ships that are being built today, um, which need to be able to last for 25 years, you know, they, ha they go through five special surveys before they're scrapped most of them and and I think we need to be really sensitive to not trying to push ship owners too hard um, as, as insurers. We need to be there as you say to support the ship owners. So in terms of other challenges for, for the group at the moment um, or those that are on the horizon? I think I think one of the concerns that for me is is where there is regional 
legislation brought yep. in and uh, that is a big concern. We've always tried to encourage um, states to legislate through IMO, IMO and yep. Uh, shipping is a global international industry. It needs global international rules. Um, and um, uh, the IMO is the designated UN body for implementing those rules. So um, otherwise we end up with fragmented regulation with ship owners not understanding what they need to do in one place. Uh, they might have to do something completely different in another place. And, and the more we get regionalization like that, the more difficult it is actually to comply and uh, it's, it's hard enough to navigate uh, in the present uh, legislative environment mm. uh, with more and more ESG issues. So um, bringing it back to IMO and encouraging IMO to do more is, is definitely the way forward in my view. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I guess one of the things that we need to think about as well is, is what are the the big issues that might be coming up over the next few years and um, how is the group well positioned to help on on that and I may, maybe you can you've got a few ideas on that Paul I mean look a bit of crystal ball gazing <laughs> yeah, it's a tricky one isn't it I mean we, we face so much I think you know we, the, the last 18 months we've had a pandemic hit us that, that we probably didn't see on on the horizon anyway and the impact that 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 has had on shipping I think um, yeah, clearly fuel, the fuels for ships is going to be an issue and, and, and we, we, we've seen that already in 2020 um, with, with low, low sulphur etc and what impact that would have. We're going to yeah. see more and more of that. What impact will that have in terms of, of functioning of ships but also from a legal and contractual point of view as well. I think that's going to keep all of us potentially very busy. Yeah. Um, we've got autonomous vessels to deal with at some yeah. stage. Relatively few and small at the moment but it will, it will increase and, and that will bring with it challenges as well. Uh, and, and, and many others, I've got too, not too much more crystal ball gazing on that other than to say I think from the international group's point of view I think we're in a, in a very sound, strong position to deal with that. Uh, and, and I would say Nick probably more so over the last couple of years with, with the extra resource we've put in the group to get ready for it and probably the experience we've had of pandemic as well because I think that, that's actually probably fostered with us, all of us, the clubs and the secretariat a different way of working that probably will make us more effective and, and have a great ability to deal with some of these challenges when they come along. Yeah, I think that's right, Paul. And, and, and working with some of the other industry associations that are always mm. looking at what are the new vessels being built, what are the new engines being built, what are the new fuels coming out, and, and, and understanding those um, and being part of the conversation uh, before they become reality. And what, when they do become reality, then obviously we've had the chance to think about the risk and uh, where that might lead. So I think that's where we can give real value to ship owners um, through engaging with other industry associations and the people who are actually designing the ships of the future. So and, and, th and that happens all the time, of course, doesn't it? Which, you know, again, it, it's not always us as the international group that's in the forefront and of commentating on this or, or, be, or being the, spokes, you know, the spokespeople for the industry on that. But as you know very well, we're working very, very closely with a lot of, a lot of industry organisations, ICS in particular, which yep. gets us very close to ship owners. And of course, as clubs, we, we, we have the real temperature and pulse of shipping through our boards, far more than many, many other industries, because ultimately we're owned by ship owners, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Clubs are, and you know, in a funny sort of way, I guess the international group is ultimately. So we get the real temperature and pulse of, of shipping through our club boards, which we're able to, we're able to act upon, I think. Absolutely. I think, you know, in many ways, the IG is, is part of the oil in the wheels of the whole shipping industry. We are mm. there to really assist, um, but we can have a real impact as well. So looking at it now, um, actually quite excited, you know, coming out, coming out of what's been a difficult yeah. period yeah. For, um, for, for the world, never mind for shipping, a, yeah. a, a difficult economic period. Coming out of that, I'm actually quite excited about um, about the future, excited about the ability of the international group to deal with it. And Absolutely. I think all of us, um, the, you know, the, the clubs in particular, have and continue to prepare through their own succession to, to have people that can support ship owners absolutely. going forward. So making sure we're still relevant as the international group and, and, I, and I think absolutely we're, we're on that agenda. We know what we need to do to be relevant. Mm -hmm.